it's on sale. Act fast because this offer ends soon. Bonds All Pool and Spa, every day made better. If you're a homeowner or a business owner, you have a lot of projects, and no one has an unlimited budget or time. Sunbelt Rentals makes all jobs less stressful with no need to purchase large equipment or hire a crew. You can do it yourself with rentals and everything from aerators and power rakes for spring yard work, to stump grinders, concrete mixers, tile saws, and more. Check out their inventory in Lincoln, north of Cornhusker Highway on 56th Street, or online at sunbeltrentals.com. Constructors is now hiring for all positions, with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you're passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. High schoolers, unleash your creativity and learn about potential careers in broadcasting at the Digital Expressions Media Camp. Have fun, make friends, and get hands-on experience with video and radio production June 9th through the 14th at the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Scholarships are available from the Nebraska Broadcasters Association, and spots are limited. Learn more at DigitalExpressionsCamp.com. That's DigitalExpressionsCamp.com. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America, this is Old School. Sponsored by the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese. Broadcasting veteran Derek Pearson. When you find something that moves them, that makes them smile, celebrate it. That's your task. That's your superpower. Nebraska Football Hall of Famer, Jay Foreman. Rifles a pass. It was tipped. It's picked off by Foreman. He's at the 15, 10, 5. He'll score! On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. What up, my Lincolnites? Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, Old School. We are brought to you by the Mercado Certified Piedmontese. Special ingredients at Butcher Shop, 84th and Havelock, 30th and Yankee Hill. 168th and Maple in Omaha. Is that right? Yes, there, sir. There it is. Look at That's Jay. the first one. We Look start this week off right, baby. 1040 O Street, the mecca of sports radio, not only in the city of Lincoln, but in the whole great state of Nebraska. It's a beautiful day out. A little windy, but uh, about 80 degrees. Um, it's hard to believe that there's supposed to be hail later on the night or Tuesday, but we're going to take what we got right now. Um, a lot of stuff going on in sports, obviously. Um, you know, Huskers had a scrimmage on Saturday or a practice, you know, on Saturday, which was, I guess, assuming something like a scrimmage. Um, so we got maybe some audio from there, some thoughts on that. It's a big week because I think you're getting into the, into the fourth week of spring football. So this is where, in my opinion, this is where if I was in a competition, this is where I got to make a move. And, and, and it's never signed, sealed, and delivered unless you just really, really separate yourself. But this is where I want to really push myself and try to show the coaches that I can maintain some sort of level of consistent play, um, you know, intensity, and then obviously leadership. You know, if you – I think the the more times that you can attack practice like it's a game makes the game easier. And I think the better that you train your mind for both – Obviously, the best outcome, positive outcomes, but then also understand that there will be times that you get your butt kicked and then how you, you know, recover from it. I think it becomes easier. And that's the way, you know, that's what spring ball is. It's not for the faint of heart. I'm sure practices are 
at least when I was in spring or when we were, or when I played spring ball practices, I think we're a little bit longer, mm-hmm. um, you know, cause there's not as, you know, we're not practicing as much and we're not playing. So I think they were a little bit longer. Um, definitely were physical and, and mentally taxing, but I think it helped us, you know, obviously play well come the fall. You can obviously dispute this if I'm talking out of my, my butt here, but I feel like spring ball is a time to be creative to be imaginative as a player, especially if you're buried on the depth chart. You're talking yeah. about with Strick, you know, get in where you fit in. You just find yeah. a way to to play a role and get get there. That's what I feel, and not that my athletic career is anything to write home about, but I was five foot, 100 pounds as a freshman. Right. Ended up, you know, starting JV by the end of the year. Right. right? To just climb the depth chart one spot at a time, find where you can be successful, play right. your role. And then the next year, I was varsity sixth man at 5'8", 135. Right. And I finally grew into my body. But I wouldn't have you know, made that progress to my sophomore year without, I think, some creativity and some yeah. dedication behind the scenes as a freshman. Yeah, that's our, uh, that's that's a great point, Austin, because I think, like, you know, the one of the best, I guess, the best advice that, that I could give anybody in any sport is just make plays. Mm-hmm. Make winning plays. Um, don't, you know, winning plays sometimes in basketball isn't threes or two. Make winning plays. Keep making plays. Doesn't matter if I remember when I first started spring, I was with the threes. And, you know, was I disappointed? Yeah. Was I embarrassed a little bit? Cause some of the, you know, my, my other classmates or whatever, they were up on the twos and someone were starting. Well, I was like, you know what? I'm about to, sh- I'm about to sh- make you pay for me being out there. So I got to, I had to make plays there. Then when I got in the twos, I was getting the, just a very few reps and I had to make plays there. You got to get, once you continue to make plays, they're going to continue to see, well, let's see if you can do this against the, you know, the top mm-hmm. dogs or are you right at, you know, say second level. And so that's where they're at in the spring. You got to continue to make plays. You got to continue to be able to consistently show up at practice because there is no other game. So yeah. you should be approaching this. Like this is a game. There is no tomorrow. Um, I'm a big fan of every day is fourth and one. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, and, and I like that mentality because, if you can get in the moment and under and just focus on every play, fourth and one, I got to win this play. Now you're not going to win every play, but it gives you if I if I prepare for this play like it's a game, then I can go back and evaluate it and add to my game, and then I can add to the team. And so, um, and and sometimes people get confused by that type of mentality of Jay Foreman gets beat, Austin gets beat. You go from starting to fourth team. That's not it. You, you, if you if you have the right intentions and right approach, I like it because mm-hmm. I think more times than not, it's going to help you become a more consistent and better player in the long term. And that's, you know, ultimately what what separates the guys that come in and adjust well, that make it make an impact, and then continue to uh, be successful. Strick said something that's really really was really interesting that too fast a lot of young athletes in every sport think they made it. Mm. And that's the worst thing you can do. Mm-hmm. You, oh, you get it. You get, you get a, you get a black shirt. Now you want to chill. Like, this is where you really need to like go for it. Find you know? that next level. Right. Well, let's, let's prove it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, let's, let's see what we can do. Let's, let's see how good I can be. Let's see what I can add to my game. That's, um, you know, that that's going to help me be better, you know, in year two or three or whatever, you know, whatever have be. I mean, w- once you have the right mindset and approach to it, you can you you can win a lot of battles. And, and it's just internally as you're walking around. And that's what really separates guys. I mean, let's be honest, when you when you look at any room, any group in the football team, defense line, linebacker, now take it with standing. Now, if you have a guy that needs to get bigger, faster, stronger, that I mean, that take that athletic ability. There's not a lot of outliers on every team. Now, Randy Moss is, is, is one of the greatest athletes ever to walk the face of the earth. Michael Jordan is. LeBron J. Not, that's not everybody. That's why everybody loves Steph Curry. Because mm-hmm. he looks like everybody. Right. That's why people like Kayla Clark. They, they you know, she's, you know, what, six foot? Six yeah. one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's not normal size. But it's not six foot seven. Right. Uh, like the young lady from South Carolina. So you got, the, so when you look at it, there's always these little things that turn into big things that separate player one from player two 
from player five that ends up being player two, and then he ends up being one. There's so much, there's just, you know, the dedication, the intent, um, the ability to take hard coaching, the ability to focus, to be really, like, like people say, all in, bought in, all that stuff, man. I mean, it's the hardest thing for coaches to get because, like I said, it'd be like us this year. There's two, four, six cars out there. So that'd be like the equivalent of a wide receiver room for Coach McGuire. Mm-hmm. He's sitting over here trying to teach those six people that he thought he that he knows to drive in real. Like when we're on a like a test course, they're fine. Mm-hmm. Now you got to do it, and there's ninety thousand people. That's the hardest thing about coaching, mm-hmm. because a lot of times some guys think I can do what I what you need me to do in practice, but in the game I can do something else, and that's the worst type of mentality. Best quote I heard this weekend, Austin. I can't tell you the the what how it was said how i said it mm-hmm. because we'd be off the airway <laughs> and, and, and big shout out to dp man he had mouth surgery today so he would he would probably find a way to call me it, 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 it he probably <laughs> sent a text message and it take me off the air <clears throat> but the thing is is i asked why the you know what would Heck. you cook yeah come all the way down here and not apply the things that we worked on in practice so why would you drive to a game, i.e. when ten I ten hours away? Oh yeah, ten hours away. Or when I when I was making macaroni and cheese, and my daughters they told me they still tell me to this day why you changed macaroni and cheese, <laughs> why you put the blue cheese in it. Hey, every time I make a macaroni and cheese, they will come from their room or just I call it the drive by. There's not going to be any blue cheese in it, is it? Listen. <laughs> I, I will never put blue cheese in it again. But that's what that's the that's you the, learn. I did learn and but apply it. I apply it and I will never not apply it. Right. I might put some different type of cheese or something else in there, but I'm not, not putting blue. blue cheese. So that's the thing that I think that really resonates is or will resonate is who can apply what they've learned in practice or in the meetings to the practice field, to the game field, to the game, the game, and then do it over and over and over. And that's how you get consistent players and consistent teams. And that's when you got that. That's when you start to hear guys really, really be, uh, you know, thought of in a high light. So that's our first segment. I'm going to step out real quick, try to handle some business with Nick Sainer. I got to hold his hand right now. And then I'll be back. And then when we get back, we're going to talk NBA playoffs. Mm. Because I don't know who has more pressure. The Celtics? The 76ers? The Bucs got a little bit of a pass with Giannis blowing his tire. Mm -hmm. The Lakers? But I think something about them Warriors. Ooh, okay. I think they, not pressure. Yeah, a different kind. But they come. They come. They, they the Warriors are sneaky. Mm-hmm. They're gonna sneak in the back door and cause some problems. So the league wants. Yeah, yeah, trust me. They like the <laughs> light skins assassin. Anyways, Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, old school. We'll be right back. You're listening to Old School with DP and Jay. Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on ninety three seven The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Put lawn irrigation on automatic. Think Judson Irrigation for worry-free service to Lincoln homeowners and business community. Judson Irrigation will turn on your sprinkler system in the spring, repair or redesign as needed, and turn it off in the fall. For service to orphan sprinklers, remember Judson Irrigation. They'll never forget you. Call the Judson Irrigation Orphanage, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. The fans of Kansas Speedway know how to have a good time. One that celebrates fantastic finishes and family-friendly facilities. Trading paint. We got beauty. And tailgating tradition. Burnouts, beer, and barbecue. Oh, it'll for sure be a good time. And you are all invited. Yes, car weekend at Kansas Speedway, May 4th and 5th. Get your tickets now at kansasspeedway.com. Hey, Nebraska, register today for the 40th annual Cornhusker State Games, taking place July 11th through the 21st in Lincoln, Omaha, and other Nebraska communities. The Cornhusker State Games features 70 sports for athletes of all ages and abilities. Price increases are approaching, so register early and save. For details, go to cornhuskerstategames.com. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel with Gatorade. Brought to you by Pepsi Cola of Lincoln, a proud partner of the Cornhusker State Games. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. 
Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. If you're in Seward or Milford, listen up. Select Plumbing is now servicing your area with no trip charges from Lincoln. Select Plumbing works on a variety of issues for your home and business, including general plumbing, water heaters, faucet and fixture repair, underground sewer and water repairs, backflow testing, and more. Keep your property free from leaks and other issues. Call today for a free estimate, 402-560-6197. It's not just Lincoln, Waverly, and the surrounding area anymore. It's also Seward and Milford with no trip charges. Contact Select Plumbing to inquire at 402 402- 560-6197. Do you need motivation to get to the gym on the weekend or even in general? Tune into the Movement Hour each Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Movement Academy owner Robert Kuhlman will host the show as he introduces new ways to stay in shape. The Movement Hour every Saturday morning from 10 to 11 a.m. on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Use this body shop where our customers send their friends. That's the greatest compliment we can receive. If you've been in an accident, we'll get you back in your vehicle as quickly as possible. Our technicians care about you and your family and repair your vehicle to factory standards. We handle your claim from start to finish and provide a free loaner car. Stop by for a free estimate. Eustis Body Shop, just south of 88th and Highway 2. The most recommended Eustis Body Shop, that's who we are. Spring sports are here and it's time to upgrade your equipment. But don't go rush into your big box store. Played Against Sports is your place to go for all spring sports equipment for baseball, softball, golf, and disc golf. Played Against Sports has quality, slightly to gently used equipment, and 50% of their inventory is actually new equipment. And don't forget, buying from them is a great way to get new products with great discounts by also bringing in your used items for store credit or cash on the spot. Played Against Sports at 48th and Vine. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again, and they're hiring for production operators at $24.62 per hour, which grows to $28.97 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $33.36 per hour, with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates, with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to ContinentalJobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. Hey, Husker Nation. Matt Davison here with 1890. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student-athletes, So go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. Get rid of pesky critters once and for all with Bats to Rats. Their expert team is here to help you reclaim your home. No more sleepless nights caused by crawling critters or flapping wings. Bats to Rats ensures a safe environment for every family member. Check the website at BatsToRats.com for amazing offers. And if you mention this ad, you'll receive $10 off your initial inspection cost. Call Bats to Rats today at 402-781-8691. That's 402-781-8691. Bats to Rats. Back to Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Jay Foreman stepped out. That's all right. We'll hold down the fort until he gets back. I'm Austin Norman. This is Old School brought to you by the Mercado Certified Piedmontese. Big thanks to Starter Human Jewelers for getting our live streams up and running for us. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter all available for you as is Allo Channel 961. Thanks to Allo for sponsoring Channel 961, as well as our VIP line. Uh, we talked to Brian Munson of Husk Online on the Allo VIP line uh, toward the end of On the Block. So if you missed that, go back, watch the stream, or the podcast will be up for you later tonight. During that interview with Brian, we did have some news breaking on the Nebraska men's basketball front. Positive news, I believe, as Nebraska... Uh, gets the commitment from Raleigh Worcester, 
uh, out of Missoula, Montana. Went to a high school called Hellgate High School. Yeah, Hellgate High School in Missoula, Montana. That's a pretty hardcore metal name for a high school. Um, was initially committed to Montana at one point. Um, had a pretty good uh, circuit. Uh, blew up a little bit more. Ends up going to Utah State in uh, the, the COVID year. So 2020-21 was his first year. Started 25 of the 26 games he played. there for the Aggies average 28 minutes per game. And then transferred to Utah. Uh, with Coach Craig Smith. So he's been at Utah the last three years. He's played in 77 games at Utah, started 76 of them, um, started 30 of 31 games in 21-22, started all 30 games that he and the Utes played in 2022-23. Then this last year, limited to 16 games, but he did start all of March. So what stands out about him? Well-rounded player, averaged just under 10 points per game at 9.9. Also averaged five and a half assists and five rebounds per game. That's really good balance. That's a a do-it-all guy who's going to contribute on both ends of the floor. Also adds a steal and a half per game as well. So that's a two-way player. Reminds me of maybe just a a shorter Sam Greasel, potentially, you know, uh, averaging double digits or right about double digits in the scoring column. Uh, Good facilitating. Again, five and a half assists. That, That would have been, I think, top five in the Big Ten this past season. So that's obviously pretty incredible. And then you also uh, throw in the five rebounds. We know Nebraska can always use rebounding help. Uh, Axel Foley, can he play point? Yes. Specifically, that's why Nebraska went and got him. He is a point guard. That is the role he will fill for this team. He, he ran the point for for Craig Smith at Utah for for these last few years. The, the one downside that I see with a guy like Raleigh Worcester, the shooting numbers. Not exactly confidence inspiring. From from two, he he shot forty eight percent at Utah, forty six forty six percent at Utah rather. Um, took about five six shots a game from two point range. Um, so he made you know two or three of them per game. So that's fine. The three point shooting numbers though have not been good. Um, he's averaged uh, just about two and a half attempts per game over his career only shooting 29% from three point range for a guy who at six foot three, 200 pounds is going to play on the perimeter quite a bit. Unless of course, Nebraska uses him kind of like they did Sam Greasel, where he's going to get into the mid post. He'll back guys down on the block, maybe facilitate from there. Um, the, the 29% career three point shooting number is somewhat surprising because this is a guy that shoots 77% on free throws for his career. In fact, his first three seasons, he was up over 80%. Uh, 80.4% as a freshman, 80.4% again as a sophomore, 81% as a junior. And then last year at Utah, the most free throws he's, he's taken you know, on a per-game basis averaged just about four attempts per game, only shot 71% from the free throw line after shooting 80% the previous three years. And that doesn't even really correspond with his three point shooting numbers that stayed pretty much in line with his career average. The highest he shot from three in a year was his sophomore year at 33%. So maybe Fred Hoiberg and his staff with an off season of development can get that jump shot workable, but expecting him to go from a 29% three point shooter to a 35% three point shooter. Not likely, very, very unlikely. In fact, the free throw numbers I would expect to normalize. I don't think he'll shoot all the way down at 70% again, especially after a three year track record of having shot 80% from the free throw line. So if he settles in at that, you know, 75, 76, even his career, 77% mark, not where I personally would like his numbers to be. um, But you can talk me into a guy, um, you know, that size, pretty good size. Um, you know, shooting 77% from the free throw line, we would like it better, but I, I expect the free throws to tick up. What's he got to shoot from three? It's got to be, you know, 33%. If he can make one out of every three tries from long range, I don't love it, but that's at least a, a credible enough threat from outside. I, I pulled up Aaron Ulysses numbers. I think those are a, a worthwhile kind of comparison here. So Aaron Ulysses at 6'3", 190. Raleigh Worcester at 6'3", 200. Um, Raleigh Worcester was at uh, Utah, if I didn't mention that before. 
Um, but again, Aaron yields this number is 37% on twos, 31% from three and 78% from the free throw line, but not the same number of rebounds and assists. So Raleigh Worcester has been more productive than Aaron Euless is in his career. And I'm curious to see how that battle shakes out. Maybe they go offense defense at the end of games with Euless as the, the defensive sub. Um, but that absolutely remains to be seen yet. So getting back to the comparison that I, I was thinking of for uh, Raleigh Worcester was Sam Greasel. Okay, so Sam Greasel, for his career, shot 44% from two compared to uh, 41% for Raleigh Worcester. Sam Greasel shot 32% from three, 29% for Raleigh Worcester. And then uh, Worcester's been better at the free throw line, 77%. Uh, to Sam Greasel's darn near even 70%. Um, Sam Greasel's shooting numbers at Nebraska from three, um, pretty much in line with what he did in his career. Um, his last two years at North Dakota State, he shot 34% and 38% from three. At Nebraska, he shot 32% from three. His free throw numbers were, again, kind of in line with his career at Nebraska. So my expectation for Rally Worcester is that he's just a guy. He'll be fine. I think he he fills a role um, I, I hope he brings some of those intangible sort of benefits, right? The, the calming effect, the, the organization, the game management, that's the role that I really hope Raleigh Worcester is being brought in to fill for this Nebraska men's basketball team, because we saw Bryce Williams run the point capably. Um, if Bryce Williams is going to go on pro- to a professional career of some sort, it's going to be a great experience for him. But I think you could still tell, even by the end of the year, it's still a work in progress, still some work to be done there. So it wouldn't shock me if Bryce Williams still does run the point plenty for Nebraska. But if you're telling me Raleigh Worcester is taking some of those reps and Bryce Williams is free to be a scoring two or a three and D guy at the wing position, I think that's probably a better use of Bryce Williams' skill set and can give you some more creative things to do with a guy like, like Raleigh Worcester. Um, Ellison, Illinois. Yeah, if he's a 29% shooter, then he must be told he can't attempt any or many. Uh, that percent is a killer. Yeah, especially in an offense like this, where Nebraska's you know shooting numbers this year weren't as good as uh, I thought they were going to end up being. They weren't bad. They were definitely better than they had been in years past. But as a team, Nebraska ends up shooting 35.7% which was good for 88th in the country. And this is a, a discussion I've had with multiple people, you know, in the last couple of weeks, but especially since the end of Nebraska season is does Nebraska need a new element introduced to the team or does Nebraska need to get better at doing what it already does? I, I think both answers are, are correct, but Raleigh Worcester doesn't fit the mold of a, a game breaker, um, not a game changer athletically necessarily. So if Nebraska men's basketball isn't going to get more athletic, is still going to have, you know, trouble staying in front of, you know, Terrence Shannon Jr. or a Wade Taylor the fourth and Elijah Hawkins from Minnesota, even. If Nebraska is not going to get more athletic, then Nebraska needs to shoot better than 35.7% from three. It's a big step in the right direction to get there, but now 35% is the baseline. If Nebraska is going to rely on you know, defensive stops when it can get them and they're going to still lean into that identity, be, be physical, at least can test everything. But other teams have those X factors, that those difference makers. If Nebraska is not going to get a guy like that, that can take over a game, Nebraska has to Wisconsin the crap out of it. Nebraska has to Villanova the crap out of it and be top tier, elite, consistent execution and shoot, you know, 37, 38, shoot 39% from three point range. And if they're able to do that, if the ball movement, the, the player movement, the screening, uh, and then ultimately the three point shooting is on point, you can mix, you know, Bryce Williams from, from long range with Juwan Gary driving to the basket, Andrew Morgan, again, kind of in that mid to lower thirties range from three pointers as a transfer from North Dakota state if all of those guys are able to increase their three point shooting percentage by, you know, 1%, that's a good step in the right direction by 2%. I mean, you bring throw Eric Mass in that conversation as well. I'm going to be curious to see if Nebraska is still young enough and malleable enough to take a step forward and get better at what it wants to do, 
or if the right move ultimately was adding a new different element to give other teams something to worry about. The guy I thought Nebraska was going to go after harder in the transfer portal, uh, Connor Hickman, who played with uh, Rinkmast at Bradley for a couple of years. Uh, Connor Hickman, 6'3", 190-pound guard out of Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, All-Missouri Valley Conference performer this last year on the all-tournament team. Also made the the Mo Valley all-freshman team. Runs some point, maybe not as true a point guard as a guy like Raleigh Worcester, but Hickman averaged 14.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. But his shooting splits were 47% from 2 last year, 40% from 3, and 70% at the free throw line. So I, I was anticipating... Nebraska doing what it could to get Connor Hickman in the fold, reunited with Rink Mast, but he ends up going to Cincinnati. He will uh, be a member of the Bearcats team and play in the Big 12. Good little overview of Nebraska men's basketball in the transfer portal. I'll be right back to wrap up our one of Old School with you in just a minute. Watch Old School live on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. and Sports Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner at 1501 Center Park Road. With the Planet Fitness Black Card, you don't just get a great workout, you get a great perk out because your membership is packed with perks. For $1 down and $24.99 a month, you'll get perks like access to any of our 2,400 clean and spacious locations. Bring your friend anytime and both work out with tons of equipment that'll give you that big fitness energy. Relax in the Black Card Spa and more. Work out and perk out with the PF Black Card. Join for just $1 down and $24.99 a month. Hurry, this deal ends soon. See Home Club for details. When you were a kid, clubs were cool. Robotics club and space club and stuff like that. But what do adults get? Book clubs and quilting clubs? Nah, forget that. How about margarita clubs and old-fashioned clubs? Get to Upside Bar and Lounge for the best clubs in town. Try all 10 varieties of Upside Margaritas or Old Fashions and take home a free souvenir glass. Grab the whole crew and pair it with Taco Night on Mondays or Whiskey Wednesdays. Upside Bar and Lounge at 29th and Pine Lake. Spring is here. It's time to get back outside and into proper shoes this year. Brown Shoe Fit is the place to buy this spring with their sale on athletic shoes. Get $15 off any regular price athletic shoes with respected brands like Hoka, Brooks, New Balance, and On Running. And don't forget, Brown's carries a large arrangement of sizes and widths to fit your feet properly. Start your spring off right at Brown Shoe Fit, just south of 66 and Q in Lincoln. Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Havelock. This week's special through April 16th is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, $2.50 off with any purchase of bread and burrata. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Hello. Thanks. Angela, we have to break up. But why? Because you're a robot and I'm just a guy trying to get better internet. It's Ella Fiber, isn't it? I always knew you wanted faster speeds. My contract isn't good enough for you. Face it, Angela. They let me talk to real people. Press 4 to break my heart. Oh, wait. You already did. Visit AlloFiber.com to switch today. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox, KFXL Weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today, mainly sunny skies and breezy conditions to start off. Then a chance of showers and storms late. See a high around 83. Tonight, showers and storms likely, some of which could be severe. See a low near 63. And tomorrow, more showers, potentially storms likely. The high around 73. I mean, you're all just Kyle Collector for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Biggest question people have is, how do I start the process? What is the process? I want to build a new home, but I don't know what the first step is. Bob Benish is the founder and president of Aspen Builders, online at aspenbuildersinc.com. The first step is make an appointment. Come on into my office. Let's sit around the table. Let's talk about what you're looking for, what your needs are, what your budget might be. And let's come up with some answers on what we're going to build, where we're going to build it, and what it's going to cost. 
So now is really the time to be contacting us to get an appointment to get the job done before school starts. Once you find a good lot, let's get it reserved because there's a very limited number of lots in this town. And then start designing that floor plan that's going to be perfect for you. Next thing you know, we're moving dirt. Make your dream home a reality and call Aspen Builders at 423-6811. Online at AspenBuildersInc.com. Your home is waiting at Aspen Builders. This is a former Husker and NFL linebacker, Jay Foreman. For years, I've suffered from degenerative problems at both of my ankles. But thanks to a thorough and thought-out plan provided by Advanced Medical Imaging, I was able to get my life back with the least amount of pain as possible. While working through multiple options, the team of physicians at Advanced Medical Imaging were there to answer any questions I had. If you're experiencing any pain at all and want to get your life back, go to amimaging.com or give them a call at 402-484-6677. Advanced Medical Imaging, located at 7601 Pioneers Boulevard. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. Not many businesses can say they've made it 60 years, but Madsen's Bowling and Billiards can. With 12 bowling lanes and the biggest pool room in Nebraska, where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? There's a great daily specials like $2 Tuesdays, games of bowling, shoe rentals, draft beers, and tacos, all just $2 each. Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling or pool session, and you'll leave satisfied. Madsen's Bowling and Billiards at 47th and Dudley. Back to Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Couple Husker news and notes items here for you to wrap up Old School. I'm Moss Norman with you on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Uh, sticking on the basketball front here, WNBA draft tonight. Text line 402-464-5685. Does Jazz Shelley get drafted? Let me know just a simple yes or no. Um, her replacement for Nebraska, a, a foreign dignitary, such as it is, um, Alberte Rimdahl, transferring to Nebraska from the University of Florida. She started 50 games over the last two years for the Gators. Um, played in 96 career games. She averaged seven points, two rebounds, and an assist and a half across those three seasons. Uh, Rimdahl shot 33.7% from three and 89% at the free throw line. Uh, that's a 5'9 guard from Denmark. So there's your, your Jazz Shelley replacement, high major transfer into the Nebraska women's basketball program. And on the baseball front, Mason McConaughey was named Big Ten Pitcher of the Week. Second straight week, it's been a Husker taking home that award. Uh, previous week, it was Brett Sears for his masterful performance. And this week, it was Mason McConaughey, who earned the one win for Nebraska in the series against Rutgers. Tough weekend up in Piscataway. Uh, Huskers bookend the weekend with losses, uh, but they they rolled on Saturday a 16-1 to win. So obviously, the offense was a big headline. But here's Mason McConaughey. Um, went seven shutout innings. Nine strikeouts and just six singles. Only one base runner uh, got to third base. So heck of an accomplishment for Mason McConaughey. One of the best starts of his career at Nebraska in the second straight week that Nebraska baseball takes home Big Ten Pitcher of the Week honors. We'll take a break. Jay Foreman should be on his way back. If Jay is back, I know he wants to dive into the NBA playoffs. Who's got pressure on him? Who doesn't? If it's me, we're going to dive into college basketball. Different tiers of jobs. You know, there's been a lot of conversation about that with both Louisville and Kentucky opening up this offseason. Where do those schools rank in terms of desirability of job? A um, couple different places have put out some some tiers. So I'm going to dive into those and give you my thoughts. We'll do that if Jay's not back. But if he is, we'll see where Jay Foreman takes us. This is Old School on 93.7 The Ticket. You're listening to Old School with DP and Jay. Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Ballard. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. 
I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, lower cost of health care, and a great education. That's why, as your senator, I helped pass the largest tax cut and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. John Henry's has a brand new membership club to protect your entire home in one program. With a VIP and a deluxe option, we will help you find the plan that best fits your needs. Receive discounts on services and equipment, priority service, complimentary inspections, and so much more. Protect your home's plumbing, heating, cooling, and electrical systems all in one membership. Call John Henry's to learn more. 435-5555, John Henry's Plumbing, heating and air, and electrical. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Here you go. Coffee's on me and my new BFF. I thought I was your best friend forever. BFF like best financial friend at Members Own Credit Union. Right now, they're offering $100 when you consolidate or transfer a loan or an existing credit card balance and meet requirements. Plus, you get great rates and free advice from a financial partner that will put you first. That sounds like a match made in heaven. Members Own Credit Union is the type of bestie you can count on. Get started today at MembersOwnCU.org slash BFF. Limitations may apply. Equal housing opportunity. One action, no matter how small, can have a world of impact on the life of a child. Cedar started because one couple believed that they could provide a child with a better life. And that belief grew into the Cedars that we know today, a powerful force for good that helps thousands of kids across Nebraska. Belief grows. This is a former Husker and NFL linebacker, Jay Foreman. For years, I've suffered from degenerative problems in both of my ankles, but thanks to a thorough and thought out plan provided by Advanced Medical Imaging, I was able to get my life back with the least amount of pain as possible. While working through multiple options, the team of physicians at Advanced Medical Imaging were there to answer any questions I had. If you're experiencing any pain at all and want to get your life back, go to amimaging.com or give them a call at 402-484-6677. Advanced Medical Imaging, located at 7601 Pioneer Boulevard. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM first. 93.7 The Ticket. Grab a free burger and beer at LA Power Sports of Lincoln on April 27th during their Husker Spring Game tailgate. Meet the L.A. Power Sports team, play some tailgate games with them, and enter for a chance to win an official John Elway autographed football. Check out their huge selection of boats and watercraft for the summer, along with hundreds of motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides from all the major brands. Stop out and watch the game with them on April 27th. L.A. Power Sports of Lincoln, 27th and I-80. They'll be tailgating all day. At Parkview Animal Hospital in Lincoln, it's not just their professional care that sets them apart, but their warm staff and state-of-the-art facilities. Whether it's for a routine checkup or a comprehensive medical procedure, at Parkview, your pet isn't just another number, but a valued member of their caring family. Visit them at pahlincoln.com today and in person just south of 14th and Pine Lake Road. Parkview Animal Hospital, your pet, our passion. For happier, healthier furry friends. Biggest question people have is, how do I start the process? What is the process? I want to build a new home, but I don't know what the first step is. Bob Benish is the founder and president of Aspen Builders, online at aspenbuildersinc.com. The first step is make an appointment. Come on into my office. Let's sit around the table. Let's talk about what you're looking for, what your needs are, what your budget might be. And let's come up with some answers on what we're going to build, where we're going to build it, and what it's going to cost. So now is really the time to be contacting us to get an appointment to get the job done before school starts. Once you find a good lot, let's get it reserved because there's a very limited number of lots in this town. And then start designing that floor plan that's going to be perfect for you. Next thing you know, we're moving dirt. 
Make your dream home a reality and call Aspen Builders at 423-6811. Online at aspenbuildersinc.com. Your home is waiting at Aspen Builders. Hey guys, it's Bill Bush. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty has opened a new location in Pender, Nebraska, in addition to their office in Lincoln. The real estate world can be confusing, so why wouldn't you want an expert helping you every step of the way? If you're looking to buy or sell farmland in Nebraska, Kansas, or Iowa, give Ethan Sorensen a call today at 402-380-0432 or visit them online at nextagrealestate.com. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty with locations in Lincoln and now Pender, Nebraska. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America. This is Old School. Sponsored by the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese. Broadcasting veteran Derek Pearson. When you find something that moves them, that makes them smile, celebrate it. That's your task. That's your superpower. Nebraska Football Hall of Famer Jay Foreman. Rifles a pass. It was tipped. It's picked off by Foreman. He's at the 15. Bam! Five yards. Score! On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome in hour two of Old School with you till right at six. Then we'll get you over to the south side of Chicago, Kansas City Royals. My Kansas City Royals cooled off a little bit in New York, lost the series to the Mets, still second place in the AL Central. But uh, they head from Queens to the south side of Chicago to take on the Chicago White Sox, who they mopped recently. For those of you who might not be familiar, um, obviously, if you, you win every game of a series, traditionally, it's called a sweep. Um, but I think it's Suspicious Family Barbecue on Twitter that came up with the term mop. So if you, you sweep or win all four games in a series, instead of calling it a sweep, uh, it's called a mop. So the Royals mopped the White Sox last time they saw them in Kansas City. They head out for a, I believe, two-game set? Three, Three-game set against the White Sox here Starting tonight, they'll be Tuesday and Wednesday as well. Off day before hosting Baltimore in Kansas City. Of course, the Royals have already gone out to Baltimore. Uh, bullpen didn't do them any favors there. Royals lost uh, that series 2-1. to one. So curious to see uh, what the birds look like on the road. Uh, text from Noah in Lincoln on the Sartre Heyman text line, 402-464-5685. Noah asks, how's the rest of Nebraska baseball season? Look, is a tourney run possible? Let me answer your second question first here, Noah. Um, a tourney run isn't just possible. I would say it's probable, and I would absolutely say it's expected. Nebraska baseball, um, just two weekends ago, was in the conversation, early projections for not just being a regional team, but being one of the top 16 teams in the country and being assigned a regional host berth, which would be awesome. First time since, what, 2005, 2008? Somewhere in there, it's been a long time since Nebraska baseball's hosted a regional. Um, that talk has cooled off. They, they lost to Creighton, lost the series to Rutgers this weekend as well. But this should still be an NCAA tournament team. Uh, Nebraska is 6-3 and three in conference right now, still uh, near the top, if not still at the top, depending on tiebreakers with other teams. Um, and Nebraska was the last team in the Big Ten to lose double-digit games. Nebraska has let a few slip through the cracks. I mean, Texas Tech comes to mind and then Oklahoma as well. The Sooners down to not just their last out, but their last strike. That's a team that's playing some good baseball. Nebraska missed an early season opportunity to win that one. Uh, lost to Creighton as well in there and, and the bullpen didn't do Brett Sears any favors on, on Friday. So Nebraska is still sitting pretty in terms of gaining an NCAA tournament berth. Hosting a regional though, as tough as it is to say this early on, I mean, not early, but, you know, with still 20 odd games to go. Regional hosting is, I assume, out of the picture unless Nebraska runs the table, looks really impressive doing it and gets some help. I mean, the rest of the conference is going to have to pick it up and help these these games, you know, mean something, which is, which is hard for Big Ten baseball games to, to matter a lot in the eyes of the, the selection committee. Um, take care of business in the non-conference. And then you need SEC teams to cannibalize themselves, ACC teams, Sunbelt, um, you know, your Dallas Baptists, Rice, teams like that need to need to beat up on each other as much as they can if Nebraska wants to backdoor its way into to spot number 15 or 16 hosting. But again, I'm not holding my breath for that. For, for me, the expectation is make a regional. If you're a two seed, that's 
fine. That's as better than you were last year, obviously not making postseason play. So just get into the tournament uh, and hope you, you get a good draw from there. As what that's for what the rest of the schedule looks like. Huskers get home and they stay home here for a couple of weeks. They take on Creighton at, at Hawksfield tomorrow night. That'll be a 605 first pitch. And then Maryland comes to town this weekend. Maryland, who lost Rob Vaughn, their head coach to Alabama. Um, but the Terps are actually, you know, responding pretty well. It's always going to be a talented team. After that, uh, Kansas returns the favor. They, the Jayhawks will come to Lincoln a week from tomorrow. And then the the big series that I think a lot of people circled, um, you know, not just because it's this team, but because of where they were picked, Iowa. So not this weekend, but next weekend, Iowa comes to Haymarket Park. That's the only time the Huskers will see the Hawkeyes. So I, I was been okay. I was been solid. They, they faltered a little bit more. And I think people expected them to in the non-conference and the rotation hasn't lived up to its billing. I don't think, I mean, you think of a guy like Brody Breck to stop playing football, to come throw hundred miles an hour, you know, pretty consistently for Iowa. He's been fine. Um, but not, not picking up quite the headlines. Iowa, I, I think was the, the preseason pick to win the big 10. They were definitely in the top four. Um, not lifting up to that billing right now, but that's a series at home that Nebraska can't afford to overlook just because they've gotten off to a better start than the Hawkeyes. So welcome Iowa to town in two weekends and take care of business there. From there, you go back to Omaha to take on Creighton. Um, Kansas State will come to uh, Hawks Field then that very next day. Your final conference series come against Minnesota, Indiana, and Michigan State with a lone non-conference game against South Dakota State uh, second week of May. So yeah, everything this team wants to accomplish and attain is on the table for it. I think Iowa needs to pick it up. I think Indiana needs to pick it up. And, and I think Nebraska, if it takes care of business against Maryland, going to be rooting for the Terps as well to try to boost that RPI and get Nebraska you know, into a, a conversation where it's not getting sent to Fayetteville <laughs> against the number one overall seed when maybe the resume doesn't doesn't justify it. What does the resume justify for some of these college basketball teams? Where do they rank in terms of the job? How strong, how good, how desirable are these jobs? I've seen a couple of these lists put out recently. I really think it's worth digging into. So the tweet that I'm looking up is from JBR Bracketology, tweeted out uh, about 8 o'clock Central Time this morning. Um, JBR Bracketology says the tiers are based on a mix of recent success, historical success, recruiting footprint, fan support, and NIL support. Those are the categories here being used to, to judge these jobs. Let's start at tier one. Let's start at the top. Carolina, Kansas, Kentucky, Duke, Yukon. Any arguments, let me know. 402-464-5685. Carolina, Kansas, Kentucky, Duke, Yukon. Four blue bloods and a new blood in that conversation there for tier one. Carolina makes sense, pretty self-explanatory. Kansas makes sense, self-explanatory. Kentucky, if you haven't seen the videos of Mark Pope's entrance, he had his introductory press conference yesterday, definitely go back and check that out. They got the, the 1996 Kentucky team that won the national title all on a bus, uh, drove it into Rupp Arena, had the team walk off the bus uh, with Mark Pope last holding that 1996 championship trophy. And, and here's another question for you uh, Husker fans. If Nebraska opened an introductory press conference up to fans, held it at, at Pinnacle Bank Arena for, for a new football coach or a new men's basketball coach, would you go? Would you go and watch this? I, I'm genuinely curious. Would you Husker fans go and watch an introductory press conference in person at Pinnacle Bank Arena. Kentucky fans filled it up. They filled Rupp Arena up, 20,000, 22,000. Um, it was essentially a sellout at Rupp Arena for the introductory press conference for Mark Pope. And that's just another great reminder that social media is not reality. The hire wasn't panned on social media. It wasn't a lot of backlash necessarily, just a lot of meh. Okay. Um, Mark Pope is a good coach. His records have been right in line with what the guy before him did at the previous jobs at Utah Valley and then at BYU. Um, Mark Pope didn't win a tournament game, uh, either Utah Valley or BYU 
And I believe he's under 500 even in conference tournaments. So the social media reaction from Kentucky Twitter, such as it is, was pretty muted, kind of a, a raised eyebrow. Really, you went to, to this guy and you went to him this quick. How much due diligence, due diligence did you actually do? But then Kentucky fans show up 22,000 strong in support of this guy at his opening press conference. I mean, talk about a roar of the crowd. That whole 96 team getting off the bus, welcomed with open arms, admired. And then here comes Mark Pope. I mean, big guy, good personality, beaming ear to ear, holding up the championship trophy. Huge roar. So no, social media is not reality. Um, but I, I was still very impressed with the response of Kentucky fans there. 2312 asks, had they done it for Scott Frost, Pinnacle Bank Arena would have been full. That's fair. Yes, I think Pinnacle Bank Arena would have been bursting at the seams to see Scott Frost introduced, especially if it was a weekend, right? So many of these introductory press conferences are held on weekdays, but I think holding it on a weekend and opening it up to the fans, absolutely incredible idea. And one of my buddies who's a big Kentucky fan has some ties back there was saying that it's hard for him to imagine Kentucky reclaiming the mantle anytime soon of the cool program in college basketball. Mark Pope's going to be good, going to be solid, he thinks, but maybe not as, you know, awe-inspiring or appealing to nearly as many, you know, five-star players like Coach Calipari has been been bringing in for Kentucky. Um, but to, to really make Kentucky a program of the fans, by the fans, you know, for the fans, a lot of fan service going on. Like I said, bringing out that whole 1996 team, walking them off the bus, holding the trophy, um, scheduling Rick Pitino in St. John's for a home and home over the next couple of years. I think Kentucky's doing a pretty good job. Uh, I don't say saving face. That, that's harsh. Of, of boosting their guy, of making it look good. The optics are absolutely there. And again, a great reminder that, that social media is not reality. Uh, back to the tiers list here. Jordan P on the text line. Those other four not named UConn got to make something happen soon because UConn has owned the last 30 and through a bunch of coaching changes. Yeah, that's pretty much it, Jordan. I mean, UConn essentially has 26 years of basketball history, maybe 30 if you want to round up. Won the title in 99 and five more since that. Six titles since 1999. It's hard to win a national title in college, well, in any sport, but when immense college basketball, just with the, the nature of March Madness, um, getting matchups and whatnot. And UConn has had its fair share of, of ups and downs throughout the time, which is why I'm not completely sold on UConn as a blue blood. You know, clearly six titles in 25 years at least gets you in the conversation. I mean, boatloads of NBA talent. Jim Calhoun is, you know, an underrated all-time great coach. But if you look at those other jobs up there, Carolina recruits itself. Kansas recruits itself. Duke recruits itself. Kentucky recruits itself. UConn's in the middle of nowhere. UConn, I, I think, UConn men's basketball is what Oregon football always wanted to be. The hip, cool program um, that, that got a bunch of resources poured into it at one point and really took off. So you look at what Jim Calhoun did, pretty darn successful. Kevin Ollie took over and won two national titles. Also missed the NCAA tournament multiple times. And part of that was the move to the American Conference, but UConn didn't dominate the American Conference at all. They moved back to the Big East. Dan Hurley comes in. It takes him, you know, a couple of years to get up and rolling. But guys, the last team to beat UConn in the NCAA tournament was New Mexico State, who was led by Teddy Allen. Think about that. Teddy Buckets beat UConn. He's the last man to beat UConn in an NCAA tournament. Just wild to think about. UConn definitely gets points for the recent success. Um, recruiting footprint, I'll give them credit for being there in, in the New York, Boston, um, you know, DC, I think you can, you can count as a UConn recruiting area kind of footprint. And having Dan Hurley there, you know, those regional ties, I'll give them, give them credit for that. I'm they need to be like like tier one B. The other four jobs I think are very clearly tier one, tier at tier one A, you know, four best jobs in all of college basketball. UConn is over the last 30 years, but historically, I, I'm I'm not sold. 
a team that's not in tier one that I thought would, would have been a slam dunk is UCLA. Talk about recruiting footprint. Talk about historical success. And even their recent success, they haven't, you know, fallen off to the degree that, that UConn has in, in UConn's worst years. Um, UCLA might have the, the most and best history of any, you know, college basketball program. And for them to be tier two alongside Michigan, Ohio State, Texas, Arizona. No, I, I, I don't believe that. Um, so the rest of tier two, then it is Louisville, Michigan State, Villanova and Indiana in that conversation. And we welcome Jay Foreman back in here going over uh, tiers of college basketball coaching jobs here. Jay, I know we were having this discussion in the back room a little bit. Yeah. Um, tier two, Arizona, Michigan State, Michigan, Texas, Louisville, Ohio State, UCLA, Indiana, Villanova. Any of those too high? Any of those too low? Hmm. I think UCLA is a little bit too high. Really? Now, where they're at right now. Yeah. Like, legacy-wise, I could almost put those in Tier 1. Mm -hmm. Tier 1 being, you know, super blue blood. I think right now they're still trying to fill their way with, you know, consistency. But I like UCLA. I think they're a strong two. Um, Villanova. I think you get smoke screened by the recent success of Jay Wright, you know, so I think mm -hmm. they're probably on the lower end of a two, possibly a three. The thing that really hurts them is the recruiting and then obviously yeah. the, the the size of the school. So mm -hmm. and the conference that they're playing in, because that now everybody's, you know, up in their level. And they're almost like a East Coast version of Creighton. Mm -hmm. But Creighton is more of the it team right now. Yeah. Right. Just because of how good they've been. So um Indiana. Indiana and UCLA are similar, but I feel They're like history has been much kinder to UCLA. And even the, yes, recently, UCLA's yes. made Final Fours, like in the, in the mid-2000s, yeah. and then again, you know, yeah. made that run uh, just a couple of years ago. Even. Yeah, they did. So, I mean, I think UCLA is definitely in a better position than Indiana. I think Indiana is still in good footing with Mike Woodson. I think people were a little surprised you brought him back, but they, they obviously, I always call it revisionist short-term memory that, you know, he just lost a lottery pick, you mm -hmm. know, and then, you know, they, their, their team was very young. So I think they're in good, good standing. The problem is Mike Woodson is a little bit long in the two. So he's not going to, you, you can't think five, 10 years down the road. So who the replacement is probably gives them, I would push them more to a three mm -hmm. uh, for sure. But, you know, college basketball is, is changing when, when you, when you think of just thinking about this, John Calipari left Kentucky. Some willingly nudged out. Wasn't took, a gun to his head, at least. Yeah, took the phone call. It doesn't matter if he had some issues with the athletic department or athletic director, excuse me, mm -hmm. and then and then with the fans or whatever. He's had he's dealt with fans from UMass to the Nets to obviously to Kentucky Memphis. to Memphis, obviously you know choking away <laughs> that, that that national championship mm -hmm. to go to Arkansas. Is this is the tier three job here, which you yeah, yeah, may that's that's, yeah, that's being sure. off. That's a that's a tier three job with him there. Yeah, without him there, with the way this year went with Musselman, they're a week three, mm -hmm. average four in my in my, sure. in my in my in my playbook because of just look at their conf just look at the conference that they're in: Kentucky, Auburn, Tennessee, Bama. You got to think Florida's got some Florida, history. Florida, Florida, just this year, right? Florida. You got to think eventually Georgia is going to get there. LSU's you know, popped up here in there. Texas, Texas, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. uh, Missouri, I think would even, you know, and that's a big rivalry, Missouri, Arkansas. So I would probably lean more towards like Missouri, right? With Porter. Well, you it, got, it, you got more talent there. Right. St. Louis and KC. Right. And, and, you're right. And more. And so now you think this is the way college basketball has changed. Mm -hmm. And if John Calipari can make them a legitimate player, it changes the whole landscape of does do the blue the original blue bloods get the benefit of the doubt anymore? And that to me is another fascinating conversation to have because UConn, I'm willing to give blue blood status, but it's you begrudging. To. Because they really to. only have 25 years of basketball history. But it's a but, really but impressive also, 25 but, but, years. But, but, but here's my bigger point, Jay. 
Blue Bloods, when you look at it, whether it's college basketball or college football, haven't changed in a long time, right? Programs rise and fall yeah. and rise and fall. But the original initial group of blue bloods that we think about, like let's go, let's go to college football here for this. Notre Dame. When's the last time they won a title? Been a while. Oklahoma, you know, popped up in the college football playoff, but hasn't yeah, but won a title rate. since 01. Yeah. Um, you look at Ohio State, okay, deservedly so. Michigan, been Just forever yeah. since they won a title. Yeah. We, as a sports society, determined Blue Bloods back in the 1980s. Yeah. And that that group of teams is still who's considered Blue Bloods in sports. Like, we haven't really adjusted that club over the last 30 or 40 years. No, we haven't. And we're in, in as much as people don't want a devil in the past when it comes to Blue Bloods, we're, de- we're knee deep in the past. We mm-hmm. won't let it go. Mm-hmm. Uh, UConn, to me, is a Blue Blood. I mean, you got to think from Jim Calhoun. Um, even, and then you go to Kevin Ollie and then you got, you know, Dan Hurley. Ollie missed the tournament as often as he won a title. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, and, and Ollie, you know, was it, whether, whether you believe he was justified in being in fired or justified not being fired, obviously the courts thought he was, he was un, you know, unjustly fired. Blue also look at blue bloods, the stability and coaching mm. because that's the way you become a blue blood. Yeah. This is what hurts Indiana. The way that it, it, the tenure of Bobby Knight ended and then just the constant turnover, right? Even with the whole, now, now let's think of it now, the stupid thing with Calvin Sampson called, <laughs> made a phone call like a day or two during a so-called dead period. And he's wearing a scarlet letter the rest of his career right, for it. Right, and got jettisoned down to Houston per se. But there's been consistent turn, constant turnover mm-hmm. at Indiana, a blue blood. That's why I moved them down. Whereas like UConn, it's been Jim Calhoun, Kevin Ollie, Dan Hurley. That's it. And they're rolling. It has not changed. And, um, you know, teams like North Carolina, you know, where, you know, last year they were number one seed, you know, number one in the team in the nation, end up not making the tournament. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think blue blood sometimes lose their luster when you have some locker room issues because then the the tradition and the the, the like this, let's call them the bylaws of what made them a blue blood are gone. Yeah, it, and that's why I wasn't. I, UCLA is the outlier. I think they have more recent history, but the Cronin before Cronin, it, it was bad. They were wandering. They're right. They're just in just out there in the abyss, just trying to tread water. Now they're on more st- stable ground, but you got to think. Look at Louisville. Right. When they had Mac, I mean, they were there. And then next thing you know, it just seems like as fast as he was there and it's like they went warp speed to the top, Mm -hmm. lost that game to Duke. 23 to Zion Mm -hmm. and and Zion. This is when Zion was where you're like, this dude can be the next iconic superstar. He Mm -hmm. had the one name, right? I always look Mm -hmm. at it. Jordan, LeBron. You know, Isaiah, Magic, Bird, you know, Steph, Steph, all Zion had it. And that's where you mm-hmm. got the best version of him. And that ended Max career. And he's an excellent coach. Yeah. And they kind of, you know, spiraled after that. We'll see what they're doing now. That's a blue blood. Let me ask you this better basketball job, Michigan State or Syracuse? Michigan State. I think you just got a better pool of players. Um, but is Michigan State a basketball school or a football school? That's a hard question. I know. That's a very hard yeah. question. It, it, I think it, cheers, it changes year to year, <laughs> year to year, or, or every four years. It, right. It's a basketball school. Mm. The Magic Man went there. He did. The Magic Man went there and Draymond there. So you got to give it Mateen Cleaves. They've had some great football teams, but I think it's a basketball school. It is a basketball school. It's a hard nose. It's a blue collar. It's a blue collar. We hate the wine and cheese, Michigan. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the common folk against the corporate guy. It's a, definitely a basketball school. How many more years does Izzo have? As many as he Five? wants. Five? Listen. How, how long do you... Okay, he has as many as he wants, but how many four. more? Do, four? I'm going for even more class? Four, yes. Well, my man said he... he he When his statement was, I have to find a way to get back to where I, I want to be, mm-hmm. he's motivated more than one year. He's he's in the lab right now. This is the great thing about evaluating himself, his program, his coaches, the type of player to where he needs to be. 
he's probably going to be more open to NIL than he's ever been. Watch out for Tom Izzo. Watch out for the man that walks three and a half miles while he coaches. <laughs> I saw it on the ESPN yeah. thing. Three and a half miles again. Sports science, baby. Yeah, I like it, man. I mean, he's one of my favorite coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. um, I think he gets the most out of his players. I love the way he plays or coaches. I love the way his teams play. Um, Did you visit Michigan State and meet Judd Heathcote? I was there for football. Right. But I did you didn't not see Judd walking around. No. Ah. Um, that was hard to. Hey, Nick Saban. It was my dad. My dad knew he was gone. Yeah. Eventually, he's too good. Of a, obviously, too good of a coach. So, um, I love the campus though. Mm. Uh, great, beautiful campus. Um, not so much East Lansing. No, no offense <laughs> for anybody out there from East Lansing. Right. Let's take a break. Speaking of Michigan State, Draymond Green. How about that? The Warriors 10 sneak into the NBA playoffs. Yeah. See if we uh, have some discussion on that. Next. All right. Watch Old School Live on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Half Life. This week's special through April 16th is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, $2.50 off with any purchase of bread and burrata. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 38th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Bally. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, lower cost of health care, and a great education. That's why as your senator, I helped pass the largest task and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. One action, no matter how small, can have a world of impact on the life of a child. Cedar started because one couple believed that they could provide a child with a better life. And that belief grew into the Cedars that we know today. A powerful force for good that helps thousands of kids across Nebraska. Belief grows. Rico here with HIS Auto Care at 70th and Van Dorn, letting you know HIS is a great place to bring your vehicle for service. With superior service, bumper to bumper, we'll treat your vehicle like it's your mother's. Doesn't get any better than that. So call 402-488-8934 and HIS Auto will make you glad you did. 5% off, mention this ad, and for sure your mother be proud you called. 402-488-8934, HIS Auto Care, 70th and Van Dorn. God bless you. Houses, they're expensive. And once you buy one, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. You need to make sure you get your best house for the best price. You need Ben Bleicher and his team of pros at Professional Realty Group. They'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home, and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale. That's professional knowledge, proactive service. We call that potential. Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Service Ambassador. Find more online at prg-ne.com. Are you tired of living in pain? It's time to take control. At Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery, we're your one-stop shop for expert care in Lincoln. From broken bones to complex reconstruction, our skilled team will help you get back on track. Visit prairieortho.com today and discover why we're the trusted choice for thousands of patients. Don't let pain hold you back. Take the first step towards a better pain-free life with Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery where healing begins. Call 402-489-4700. Lincoln, you wanted more sweet and spice in your life, and now you've got it. At Wings and Rings, their brand new hot honey has all of Lincoln buzzing. Try their one-of-a-kind house-made sauce on the brand new hot honey chicken sandwich or their hot honey shrimp and slaw. And of course you can get it on the traditional, boneless, or smoked wings that have made Wings and Rings your go-to neighborhood spot. Hot honey was supposed to be gone on April 1st, but they're extending it indefinitely. So stop by Wings and Rings at one of their two Lincoln locations today on O Street and on Village Lane. Spring is here. It's time to get back outside and into proper shoes this year. Brown Shoe Fit is the place to buy this spring with their sale on athletic shoes. 
Get $15 off any regular price athletic shoes with respected brands like Hoka, Brooks, New Balance, and On Running. And don't forget, Browns carries a large arrangement of sizes and widths to fit your feet properly. Start your spring off right at Brown Shoe Fit, just south of 66 and Q in Lincoln. Wall-to-wall wine and spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Hi everyone, Kendall Warnock, A1 Automotive in downtown Lincoln. Spring is here, summer is fast approaching. With weddings, vacations, and weekend getaways on your mind, do not let car issues prevent you from getting where you need to be. Car problems shouldn't be something that you put up with. Let us get you back on the road in comfort and safety. We diagnose all makes and models from Porsches to Hondas, Toyotas, and Chevrolets. We fix a variety of issues with all of them with our talented techs and our experienced staff. A1 Automotive at 11th and L, downtown Lincoln. Always honest answers. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Infrastructure, a veteran-owned local company proudly serving Lincoln, Lancaster County, and the surrounding areas. Bauer provides quality work at an affordable price, and they're growing rapidly. If you want to experience a career with a fast-paced, family-friendly environment, visit BauerInfrastructure.com. They have top-of-the-line benefits, year-round work, even through the winter. Bauer, usher in the new era of infrastructure to an area near you. And as always, go Big Red! Back to Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. We're back. Old School, Jay Foreman, Austin Norman. Second segment, 5 o'clock hour. Beautiful day, 1040 O Street. 93.7 The Ticket. I see my man had a little bit of a brisk walk there trying to walk against the wind or with the wind. Wind aided walking time. That's like coach tells you, come on, jog into the huddle. Yeah. That's, I don't understand <laughs> that. You spend more time trying to change your gait walking like that or somehow running than actually getting to where you need to get to. But NBA talk, playoff time. Um, you know, obviously we talked about Michigan State we, leading into it. Austin mentioned my man Draymond and his Golden State Warriors, the 10th seed, seeing if they can uh, knock off the Sacramento Kings again. Styles make fights, and it's almost like uh, – the Golden State Warriors are in Sacramento's head. And mm-hmm. Sacramento, I think, is probably I wouldn't say they're the more talented team, but I like what they're I, I like them a little bit more long long term because you got Fox and and uh Sabonis, Sabonis and, and and all those guys. Murray, Murray and they got uh Barnes. Yeah. Monk um, might be walking this offseason though. Yeah. Uh because he's we he, know what it is. He's like James Hart. He yeah. needs to stay right where he's at because mm-hmm. they actually understand him and respect his game, but you got to go for the bag. Here's the sneaky thing. The Golden State Warriors know or knew last year they got lucky, and they knew Sabonis wasn't on, and he's the problem. Mm -hmm. What did they do? Go get their version of of Sabonis. That's where Golden State is, is next level. They recognize their weaknesses. They understand roles, and they go and see where, okay, this could we fit, fit essentially their version of Sabonis, which they thought James Wiseman would be. Now he's in Detroit. I don't know how well that's working out, but he's... Not very. I know. I was just joking. <laughs> um, but they they know this is the way the game's going. And also, he provides a little bit more longevity for their major pieces, which is obviously Steph and potentially Clay and Draymond. It's going to be a battle uh, to see what superstar guard gets off. Mm-hmm. Does Darian Fox step his game up to mega superstar level like he did in college, going against a uh, b- ball and just lit him up like a Christmas tree? Or does he have a regular Darian F- Fox game, you know, the 24 points? We, we're, I'm talking about he needs to hit up about 42 points. Think about what happened last time these two teams met each other in the playoff. Game seven, Steph goes yeah. for 50. Yeah. On Sacramento's home court. That's Don't forget it. that fact. Yes. It was in Sacramento. Steph went for 50 and absolutely buried the Kings' hopes and dreams. Yes, the bonus was banged up a little bit. That's a team that got, what, third in the West yep. last year? 
Like that, that was a breakout for they them. Were, and they Steph were, said, I don't care. They were last year's OKC. Yeah. Um, you know, just on the on the on the scene. We, we, Trace Trace uh Jackson Davis has he's a second round pick. First round talent, second round pick. Is come in and just smooth the waters. He's mm-hmm. he, as the seasons went on, he hasn't hit the rookie wall yet. Because he's an older guy, right? He played yes. four years in college. Knows and, what it takes. Right. Not that the NBA grind and the college grind are the same like you and Shrek were talking about on the crossover, but he's old enough, he's mature enough. And I think he's a he's a perfect modern NBA player to your point. Because he can score with both hands around the rim. Yep. We know he can jump. Um, rim run. Rim run, rim protect yep. as well. Um smart, mature guy that is really fit into their motion kind of flow offense pretty yep. well. Probably more athletic than Draymond at this point, but I think a lot of those same intangibles, maybe yep. without the fire, in terms of the intelligence, um, the rotation, and just the, the emotional maturity that, no, Draymond doesn't really have. But I, I said on draft day, that was a fantastic bridge pick. Trace Jackson Davis can be that next guy for the Warriors in that like third or fourth banana roll. Yeah, because he's playing center right now. Mm-hmm. A six one, nine. Yeah, and once Draymond leaves, he can actually be a true power forward. Mm-hmm. And you hope he he starts to develop, you know, that stretch game, which he's gotten better at since college. Yeah. And that's why when he came back for a senior year, Mike Woodson, then you know, obviously we see him up close and personal here at PBA, he got better at. Him. And I don't know how he slipped to the second round because from everything that I remember reading, he had good workouts. I think it's one of those things you kind of start to become a really, really big value pick. It was the shooting. Yeah, but. You see, that's a that was that's a myth now, though. Mm-hmm. So you know, mm-hmm. you, you got four years. This is the thing about the NBA and Shrek. You know, we talked about it. you got four years of great tape, stats, and everything with him, dominating a top three conference right. in basketball. Probably and you're going to turn time. around and be like, "Man, you didn't have a couple good work- workouts. We're going to worry about your shooting." Did you not see the four? Years? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Um, Here's 130 it, games of tape. Let's do the flip. You're garbage during your four years, but you have good workouts, and let's let's have a Anthony Bennett bust or something like that. But I think. This game, Golden State at Sacramento. Sacramento's like this is this is the funny thing about sports. Sacramento's thinking like we got them on home, our home court payback time. Golden State was like we own this isn't their home court it's ours. Just a little further north. And then the guy that the is the ultimate equalizer sent you home with a fifty burger. Legendary game. This is something that when people are down in Sacramento talking about we're going to the game. They're reminiscent about last year, game seven, and Steph hitting them up for 50. Mm-hmm. So it's not only affecting the team inside of their locker room, it's affecting the whole atmosphere. Every three, every play he makes, every free throw, every call he gets, they're thinking about that 50 burger he left uh, them with last year. Oh, crap. Here we go again. That, that's all they're thinking Don't let about. them get 50. You know how many yeah. fans are going to like, don't let them get 50. When they, say, say they're having a little bit, and what happens sometimes in these games, the home team starts slow. Mm-hmm. And so when you're going into the tunnel or in between quarters, you're going to let them get 50 again. Here you go. Saint, you let us down again. That This is mm-hmm. the type of reaction that you get from fans. And it'll be interesting to see what a young team uh, led by a really good coach, Mike yeah. Brown, what a young, how they react. Do they learn from their mistakes of last year? Can Sacramento want this game too bad? I don't yes. want them to get out ahead of their skis and get so emotionally hyped up that they they do stuff they haven't done all year. Mike Brown's a great coach. I don't think he's the reason they've lost that series last year. But, man, I can see Sacramento coming out wanting it too bad yeah, and, and being you, uncharacteristic. And you come out flat. You either come out flat or you really, really get, get down early because of the turnover margin, which mm-hmm. obviously would be in Golden State's favor. So how they react to being at home, how they react of – they're always playing late, but – You'll be able to learn a little bit from the Lakers going on the road at New Orleans. And this mm-hmm. is, that's the next game I want to talk to you about. I was telling Nick Sainer, and you know, about this game where this is where you're going to get a playoff LeBron. I think the mental edge is for the Lakers. Whereas, you know, they beat them by 45 and then they were up by 30 at, at one point in time before. You can say that, oh, Zion didn't play that much or didn't play at all. Or, you, you can say all that. And this is what you see in football sometimes. Whereas, like, it, it's like in the in an NFL where, you know, you go out there and you see a team, you know, maybe they're resting guys or there's like they already have their, their you know, they're already set for the playoffs and you get mollywopped. And you see it all the time mm-hmm. with the Cowboys. It's you just don't lose that game. You lose another game. And the other game is the mental game. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see 
both home teams deal with superstar players that know how to play in these games with a young and upcoming team that don't know how to win these games. And that's what's the, that's where LeBron, you saw it when he was in the East. He didn't really care what seed he was in. Right. He, he was fine with going on the road. That's why the Lakers, and that's also why Golden State are going to be big factors in this playoffs. And the league wants them there. I mean, talk about the TV draw with those two guys. I think that's down the yeah. list. I mean, the Lakers just made their run through the play-in all the way to the Western Conference Finals last, last year. year. Yeah. You know, it, that's not ancient history. That's last season. Los Angeles needs this more because I don't think they're ready for the offseason conversations yet. There's no. going to be a lot of drama. There's going to be a lot of talk. Is LeBron opting in? Is he opting out? Um, Polinka, Darvin Ham, what was, you know, had his butt on fire right. before Jeannie Buss calmed the waters earlier this year. And I'm not overly concerned if New Orleans loses this game, but I think if they win this one, win the first one, get into that seven, I think it's incredibly validating for them. Hey, we are on the right path. We won 49 games, uh, lost a tiebreaker to the Suns. We could have avoided this. Uh, we were one game back of Dallas, yep. who, who's in the five, and even two games back of the Clippers. So New Orleans isn't that far away. They're part of that really strong middle class. Yeah. But this is where, even if I think they are maybe a cut above the teams in the 9-10 range, they still get to play the underdog card of, hey, we let this slip through our fingers. People are writing us off because playoff LeBron, um, because of their experience. Here's where we make our mark and say, we're better than our record showed. It's our turn to make a run. Yeah, it, I mean, this is a, I mean, and I like their talent. Yeah. I do. I do. I like their talent. I like, But it's just been off the court stuff yeah. for, with them, which led to obviously uh, the rank, uh, their seating where they're at. I think, uh, you know, I think this, this NBA, you know, with, with LeBron and the Lakers and the conversation that will, will be had as soon as the Lakers are out of the, out of the playoffs. And it's everybody on the team. Mm -hmm. If LeBron opts out or leaves, does he go where Bronny's at? Or does Bronny go where he ends up at? Mm -hmm. Anthony Davis. Yes, he's shown like two week flashes of being the next guy, but he's consistently hurt. He's back actually spasms. He's back spasm right now. Can you trust him? Does he want it? And then everybody else, what do you do with Austin Reeves? I mean, <laughs> at all five of the starters are on the chopping block, let alone Rob Palenka. Will, will Genie Bus face? the pressure to get rid of him as the GM because mm -hmm. now everybody's like, okay, well, you were Kobe's best friend. You were his agent. Now you're the GM. Obviously Kobe is, is, is passed away and you haven't done a good job. Um, or haven't done a good enough job. You haven't done a good enough job and you haven't done a good enough. You haven't done a good enough job. And you, in how will you do a better job? Yeah. You haven't been able to be a big player in free agency. You tricked the You, 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 you got told no, by not only Kawhi Leonard and everybody else, you couldn't get those deals done. But somehow Jerry West across the street got it done. Right. And then you gave away Zubak for essentially, you know, a box of two boxes of matches in, in, in a in a in a bag of bubble gum. And he's the guy that actually you need more now that will allow Anthony Davis to be that stretch four instead for when he's the five. And so the the pieces that you actually need to make this a championship type of team, Caldwell Pope and those type of guys, right? You let them all go for nothing. And guess what? One of them won a title with Denver. Yes. The next, the, the, the <laughs> next, thing, the next year. year. Yeah. Let, let's also take it a step forward. Darvin Ham, when you were hired, you fired an NBA championship coach and you hired Darvin Ham. Now, Grant came in with, he was a finalist for many, many jobs, well respected. But are you the Lakers? Are you the, are you, are you the, are you the head coach material of the Los Angeles Lakers? Felt kind of Mark Pope ish. Right. And so, those conversations will be had. And then also those conversations aren't just had. Those are the conversations you have or the organization is going to be questioned. Yeah. Now it comes to LeBron. LeBron James. Eric Strickland's favorite player. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do for your legacy? Is it time to just close the chapter on L.A.? Because do you trust Rob Palenka? Do you trust Jeannie Buss? Do you trust Kurt Rambis and his wife? Because they're like the mm -hmm. assistant owners and assistant GM, mm -hmm. so do you, you know? And you will be taking a lot of the blame for some of the all the mistakes that they've done or will do. And you have maybe four years left. LeBron could probably play four more years at somewhat high level. He 
could. I mean, I'm not putting it past LeBron. Right. I'll, 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 I, I feel more at comfortable least saying two. At yeah. least two. Yeah. But if he really wanted to stretch it to four and, you know, in yeah. his mind, if Bronny starts to take off, he can be, you know, kind of like King Griffey Sr. and Kareem yeah. Jr. But there's a lot of questions in L.A. Mm -hmm. A lot of questions even with the Clippers. Yeah. Are you finally going to do something? Kawhi is healthy. You know, playoff P. Are you playoff P? Are you podcast P? Harden's been pretty good. Right, Harden's Westbrook been off Westbrook bench. off the bench. T. Lou. Yeah, you got Zubak. I mean, this is the year. This is the year you can, and you're coming underneath the radar. You're coming yeah. under, under the radar. So the NBA playoffs are about to get excited, and then we haven't even get a chance to talk about the Eastern Conference. We're probably getting that to, to tomorrow because Doc Rivers was under a lot of scrutiny, and he got saved again when Giannis blew his tire. Mm -hmm. That gave Doc Rivers the ultimate excuse. Job security, which he already had with the big contract, but questioning him, questioning wasn't get rid of Griffith. All that stuff is gone mm -hmm. since the ultimate equalizer is, is is gone itself. And also, he doesn't have to answer questions about the transition with Dame Dillard com coming in, Dame Lillard, excuse me, coming in and being the second superstar. That hasn't been as smooth as you'd like to think right. as well. All those questions are gone. You're really looking for the offseason. Uh, for, for if you're the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's the NBA talk. Jay Foreman, Austin Norman. We're going to take a quick break, come right back, put a bow on this Monday, this beautiful Monday. Uh, old school, we'll be right back. You're listening to Old School with DP and Jay. Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. This is Lancaster County Attorney Pat Condon reminding you to vote for my friend and colleague, Carolyn Bosin. Carolyn Bosin is a strong voice for Lincoln, who we need representing us in the legislature. Carolyn Bosin voted for historic funding for education to support our schools and for the largest property tax relief package in Nebraska history. Carolyn Bosin is the voice we need representing us in the legislature. This is Lancaster County Attorney Pat Condon. Join me in supporting Carolyn Bosin for legislature on May 14th. Paid for by Bosin for legislature. Spring is here, and Acres is offering special financing on select new John Deere lawn tractors and zero-turn mowers. Visit your nearest Acres store and test drive all the latest John Deere turf equipment and attachments. And for a limited time, with the purchase of a new John Deere mower, get up to $200 to apply to the steel power tool of your choice. From trimmers to chainsaws, gas, or electric, Acres is your home for steel products and service. Offer expires April 30, 2024. Subject to approved credit by John Deere Financial. Grandma and Grandpa, Mom and Dad, then the kids, and now the grandkids. Jetson Irrigation has provided lawn sprinkler system design, installation, repair, and service to four generations. They're just like members of the family. Loyalty, trust, service. It's what you deserve and expect from Judson Irrigation. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. Banking should feel personal, not intimidating. At Western National Bank, we're about real connections. Founded by two ordinary guys with an extraordinary vision to know each and every customer personally. Fees, they suck. Avoid all fees with Western National Bank's Compass Checking Account. No monthly fees, no minimum balances, and get this, 5.12 APY on the first $1,000. Open your Compass checking account online in five minutes or less at mywmb.com. Experience the difference with Western National Bank. Visit mywmb.com. Member FDIC. Lincoln, you wanted more sweet and spice in your life, and now you've got it. At Wings and Rings, their brand new hot honey has all of Lincoln buzzing. Try their one-of-a-kind house-made sauce on the brand new hot honey chicken sandwich, or their hot honey shrimp and slaw. And of course you can get it on the traditional, boneless, or smoked wings that have made Wings and Rings your go-to neighborhood spot. Hot honey was supposed to be gone on April 1st, but they're extending it indefinitely. So stop by Wings and Rings at one of their two Lincoln locations today on O Street and on Village Lane. Seems like just the other day I was building my first house. I've seen many changes to our building market in Lincoln. It's been a fun road. Bob Benish is the founder and president of Aspen Builders, online at aspenbuildersinc.com. 
you know, we hear this a lot where I don't want to live in a cookie cutter home. Well, let's come up with some answers on what we're going to build, where we're going to build it, and what it's going to cost. One thing that we started doing early on was we started building neighborhoods. I'm a firm believer in character in your street and in your neighborhood. I like choice. I like variation. I like maybe something a little bit different in a neighborhood that you don't see in every neighborhood. I think it's great to have choices, it's uniqueness, and I think that's what gives a neighborhood character. And I think that's what we've done over the years. Make your dream home a reality and call Aspen Builders at 423-6811. Online at aspenbuildersinc.com. Your home is waiting at Aspen Builders. Back to old school with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. What up? We're back. Jay Foreman, Austin Norman, old school. Quick segment here before we uh, get off your airways and let these Royals get get to doing what they do best and get busy and uh, get on that winning streak. But Austin, I wanted to ask you real quick. Um, Kentucky gets or loses another five-star recruit. Mm-hmm. Is it DEFCON 1 or is it just business as usual because of Calipari left? Right now, it's business as usual. Um, I would hope that these guys would give the head coach a fair shake, the new head coach a fair shake, but also having not gone through the recruiting process, I don't know what percentage of the time guys commit to a school versus commit to a coach. Obviously, John Calipari is a huge draw. Obviously, these guys probably never heard from Mark Pope, who who probably wasn't even allowed to dabble in those recruiting waters, let alone if he was able to. So. I would hope they would at least hear the coach out, like put their name in the portal, give, you know, Kentucky's new head coach, Mark Pope, a call or take his call just to just have the conversation. But yeah, I think it's pretty much as business as usual for now. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's a hard situation because, you know, kids definitely aren't going to Kentucky for the school, which, you know, obviously it's <laughs> and go blue, to school, play school. It, it's a, it's a blue blood. I think they're going for the coach in this, in the, in the situation. So that's always going to be a revolving door. We've seen it here, you know, no matter how well they have it or how good they have it, they, they, you know, these kids can jump into the portal. So I think it's business as usual. Um, I think, like I said, I compared this situation to Alabama, you know, you're, you're replacing a iconic figure an iconic coach it's good, and it takes a, it's going to take a unique individual, unique coach in 1000% support of the fans and athletic department to turn this thing around or keep it rolling per se. But anyways, good uh, Monday. Glad to be back. Get this party started. We'll be back tomorrow with more knowledge and more sports talk. Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, old school. We'll holler at you tomorrow. Are you tired of living in pain? It's time to take control. At Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery, we're your one-stop shop for expert care in Lincoln. From broken bones to complex reconstruction, our skilled team will help you get back on track. Visit prairieortho.com today and discover why we're the trusted choice for thousands of patients. 